But okay, okay. let's yeah. let's go with the debugging. Um, so yeah, this is quite short, but also uh, it 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 got me a bit debugging a bit what I was doing wrong, uh, <laughs> which um, is uh, fun. Uh, so basically, this chapter starts with uh, how we, the, like the main rules that we should approach when we are debugging. So um, basically, you use Google and then try to make ex examples that are rep um, reproducible and then figure out where the, the bug is and try to fix it. And um, it shows this interesting two packages, the errorist and the searcher. So the errorist, um, uh, it search for uh, it automatically activates the the errors uh, from uh, there's the search from the warnings so um, if you run it um, and, and then you get a warning that automatically opens the browser um, which I think is, is kind of useful and um, the second one is this searcher and this searcher is just basically like uh, using a um, Google from from R. Ah. So here is the, the example in the package where you search uh, uses search Google function and then you search something and it gives you drives you directly to the to the uh, uh, website. Um, so then um, f for debugging it's important to find the errors and that's why we have this traceback function. So basically, if, in this case, in the book, there was an example of this function, which then um, when you give to the function a, a string, because it requires this, this function to, um, or the, the argument to be numeric, uh, it will give a, an error, which says that D must be numeric. And now if you, after running this, uh, uh, right after you run traceback, um, you would see then the, um, all the, the process to search where exactly the error occurs. In this case, uh, the printout is uh, starts from from the bottom, uh, and then it the the main error or where, where did it happen? Um, it's show and the and the top. And um, here we see that um, this function stopped because it was not a numeric. And um, there is also some options of lazy evaluation of, of this traceback and of course a, a solution um, in Arlang which um, it the, the output of this Arlang uh, last trace which is equivalent to, to this traceback uh, it's a bit nicer because it has this uh, uh, tree structure so kind of now if you are a bit confused with, with the, exactly what is the number and uh, for instance, if you have nested functions, um, you could see it now in the structure of, of a tree with, with the last trace and, and then see exactly uh, where, is, where your error happened in this case in the, um, here adding two new functions, in this case, the, the, the uh, problem happened in, in this function k, which is the last step of the R-Lang here. And um, that's something that is also discussed a bit in, in, the, in this chapter, how um, I thought there is like several ways to look at these errors. Uh, the numbering uh, or the order of these, uh, how these errors are printed is not um, consistent. So as you can see in the traceback, we have from the bottom bottom to the top, uh, whereas in the Arlang, um, in the last trace, we, we have from top to bottom because it's a tree structure. And so um, one important thing uh, on this chapter is also that uh, with RStudio, uh, it's possible to make uh, inter interactive debugging. And um, in RStudio, this happens with the, with the options that appear in the, uh, when you run into an error, like this rerun with debug. And this, uh, if you click this, uh, it gives you, uh, it lets you to uh, a browser, which is uh, like a new, console. And this browser, um, what it allows you to do is then to uh, um, uh, analyze what, what is a, 
the space that you're running in every uh, part of your of your function. So this browser has this um, buttons, and um, basically, uh, I mean, they are very in intuitive. Uh, so the, the bottom next will give you to the next step of the function. The um, the step into it gets uh, inside the function, and it's very similar to to um, this uh, next, but it, it goes inside of the steps of the function. Then you have the the continue and um, and also to to leave this browser um, console you you use Q. And um, yes, something that is not including here as a as an individual button uh, uh, is uh, enter or where. So just as an example with the previous function that we were using, uh, if we run it, um, then we see. Um, that we we are running into into this error, and um, and we can uh, debug this function. I think it should work. Ah, yeah, so show traceback. Um, and if we go with rerun with debug, then we enter into this new. Um, space where we can individually see um, every different step of, of these functions that, that were called. So here we see um, if we go to next, uh, we see the next uh, the next environment. And then in this environment, we see that the function f. We can um, see on the, on the side like uh, all the different functions and click on them. and see how they be, uh, how they look individually and um and that's um i mean like a useful interactive way to to deal with these errors in in our uh, in our studio um so alternatively if you want the, the you can also add the browser uh, in between the code or you can uh, use breakpoints in in R Studio as well, like um, putting a putting a point of a function where you want that when it's evaluated, then you also enter into this browse console. Or um, or if you don't want to if you don't want to use the, these breakpoints, you can also use recover, which um, uh, you can set it up in the in the options. In the global options of R, and then um, when you enter in an error, in this case with this function that also it's it's non-numeric, you will automatically enter in the browser, and you have to select exactly which part of the of the different um, functions that constitute this big function uh, you want to um, to debug. So. Uh, alternatively, uh, if uh, instead of use uh, using browser as I was doing earlier, um, you can also use debug, and um, and this debug will also put you into into this uh, browser from the beginning in any function, and um, you, to remove it, you can also do do this on debug, and what it usually happens is that. Um, um, you only want to to debug uh, one time, and that's when you uh, only use debug once. So um, when you run this function, th and then you uh, enter into into the browser only once, only the first run that you make of this function, and then in the second run, um, this will not work anymore. And something that also is not mentioned in the in the book, but it, that is also important to to um, to know of debug is that it's useful to understand other external functions. Um, so other functions uh, like functions from packages such as um, uh, let me increase maybe the size of my oh, I'm decreasing. <laughs> Uh, okay, doesn't work. Okay, uh, so I don't know. Um, do you guys have a favorite function? Uh, I don't know. 
we can debug uh, read uh, CSV. So, um, okay, this was supposed to work. But I was seeing it in an example that, uh, I, ah, because I think I never leave this environment. Oh no. Um, I don't know how the guy in the other video did it. Um, let me try again with another. I think you have to call the function after the debug. Uh, so debug and then. Because um, I think what, what you can do is, is uh, just to see any the structure of any function, um, even if the function you didn't write it, only using the debug. But I don't remember exactly how was it that it was working. Okay, let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, like. You see now this uh, entering the in the debugging mode. Uh, oh, okay, again. So now um, you can uh, look individually at this uh, single function. So um, yeah, so I I think this should be the um, I don't know this is not okay. I I would check <laughs> for for the nice example that I saw, but um, but believe me, you can you can use debug to to see the code of these individual functions from from external packages to see like all the details of the of the function. Um, and what are the what is a construction of the function and what are all the different uh, uh, functions inside the function that that you are that you're trying to understand for instance so uh, that that was what you are seeing so go back to our studio yeah uh -huh. so you are that's that's already um so the first one that's what no isn't no. that the function if you go a step further? And this, no. No, okay, no, I sorry. Don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bit, um, I, I, I find it a, a bit also confusing to, to really dry uh, and work with this interactive browse. Um, but then uh, there is another alternative to to um, to use this debug, but but with the file name, which is described in the book, is this util set breakpoint. Um, but I couldn't find a, a nice example of this util set breakpoint um, with a with a file name. Um, it, I mean, it, 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 they say that it's a type of of this uh, trace function, but I. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't find a, a nice example of when uh, when did you use debug and when did you use set uh, breakpoint uh, from utils. utils. Um, but um, most interestingly, um, you can also do debugging in a non-interactive way. And this is something that I find uh, very useful and that I didn't know that um, you can do um, just to put at the beginning of any um, any, any script that you're running um, uh, this function in which you will uh, save the 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 any um, error uh, that you will have into a file and then exit from from the running 
And after that, um, when you load it back into into the R session, um, you can see the what what you wrote in, in this um, uh, in the file and debug it, the individual details of of the file that you wrote um, uh, when when you were running this uh, this particular script not interactively. And and this is very very similar to to running um, to adding in the options this uh, recover. So uh, and of course if you are running not interactively, uh, uh, you're trying to debug something not interactively. What you can always do, and when I guess everybody as um, a new user does, is to just print where exactly you think that you might have a, an error and, or to print the, the, to see where in, in a certain part of your code, what is the result and if the result that you are um, seeing um, is exactly what you expect. So in, in, the, in this case, using cat or um, some others um, use print. And um, debugging is also a bit uh, complicated in, in Markdown, uh, but there is some um, ways to to make debugging uh, be active in Markdown. And one is to um, put in the beginning of the document that the, the recovers. So basically, um, in the in the Markdown, if you put this at the beginning, then you should be able to to enter in the debugging mode. Um, and then also for um, doing this traceback because it doesn't work automatically in Markdown, you can also add, in, add these lines at the beginning of the of the Markdown document. And there are some other errors that, that oh, well, non errors, but things that could um, make your code fail, and that uh, for which you can also use some debugging. And so and some of them are like warnings that um, that you might not understand uh, from, from a certain part of your code, but that then you want to uh, debug uh, if this this particular warnings. And one option is to to convert them to um, errors. And this is again changing the the global options by adding this warn equal uh, to, and then this converts the warnings into er errors and then you can do the traceback and, and observe where exactly why, why you are seeing this warning. And when you have also unexpected messages, you can also use um, Rlang to, to, to see what, what is happening in, in the, that particular part of your code. Or when the um, also when a when a function uh, never returns what what you were expecting, you can you can see use traceback. Um, and in the worst case scenario, um, when your code is crashing, um, um, the, the, then you might need to to understand a bit more of C plus plus to debug this part. And this is coming in the section. Uh, um, 22.43, <laughs> um, and this is um, uh, and it's basically to to see a bit in more detail um, why is your code breaking uh, breaking R or R Studio. <laughs> so um, there are some useful links that I found. One is like uh, this presentation from Jenny Bryan, which she also explains nicely uh, some uh, errors and error messages and better ways to code um, the, to the bug. And then there is also this uh, other resource that I found um, where uh, this blogger makes um, a description of how uh, you can customize uh, the, this uh, the way that traceback returns the, the messages, and also um, it compares it to to other languages like like Julia or uh, Python. Uh, yeah, so here is it. So um, 
so it, it basically you can customize this uh, many things in the error in order to make it more um, uh, to to give you maybe a bit more of information or only uh, uh, information of the error up to I don't know two times the the length of your function and so on and, and it tells you explains you where where the where you put you can put this options and how to um, improve it in order to improve your your trace packs and and also um, it it touches a bit of our lang. So that's all that I have for today. Um, I don't know if there is some questions. Uh, I see something in the chat. Um, oh, okay. Okay, I will check this in Slack. Yeah, it was just kind of a cool discussion of how to extract the things that are in a function environment while you're debugging mm -hmm. to the global environment to play with later. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of touched on a couple of advanced R topics like assignment and it was neat. I was, I was really surprised in this chapter when they're talking about non error failures that, like, to me, the worst, one of the worst possible failures is when it, a function just returns the wrong data. And especially if it's subtle and you don't notice that, because that could be, you know, so the function thinks it's doing everything fine. Mm -hmm. And that's like some, a part of debugging that we didn't touch on. It's like trying to figure out why, you're, you know, like uh, where I ran into this recently, I was doing a, a data reduction um, mm -hmm. thing in R and uh, my boss replicated it in Excel and his numbers were slightly different. So I was trying to figure out, you know, working back through the code, trying to find where the difference happened. I mean, that's not really the same kind of debugging, but it's just, I think that's kind of important. So, so uh, what was exactly the, or where the, did the error happen? I, I don't... It, it was just a, a computational error, just a different, uh, <laughs> my, my function was doing the reduction slightly different than his, and it turned out that mine was, you know, I made an error in my, in my mm -hmm. code. So it's like, it's not, it's not strictly a, error in the programming sense, but it's an error in the, you know, the garbage in garbage out sense. Mm. So for this case, I think what we should learn is uh, to write test cases for a function. That's so what I was you... going to say. I was, I was surprised they didn't talk about uh, testing at all in this chapter. Yeah. But because I also like to do simple test functions, just when I write my function under the function, Two free test functions, which I keep in the code. It doesn't matter. And yeah. And I had a similar problem. Um, my my code was returning something different. And it took me quite a few hours. And the failure was in Excel. <laughs> the data which I was reading had. <laughs> had a problem in Excel. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping this was an error in my boss's Excel, but unfortunately he's, he's very, uh, he's, he's one of those people that's precise enough to actually use Excel and get the right answer out of it all the time. So. Well, it's great that, that, um, that, the oh, how's it, should, it's great that someone else checked the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good technique, especially if you have somebody that you work with who uses a different language or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so interesting. Uh, um, I don't know, like some people do code review um, while I'm working. Um, so if I write something, um, one needs to look at my code and yeah, before I uh, finalize it to see whether it, um, it is working as expected. Uh, I think also in industry, they did um, what is called code review. Um, my friend was telling me like um, while he's working, they, they have, uh, like they appeared. One is writing the code and another one is reviewing the code. So that's how they work in the company. Uh, one write the code and one review. 
Yeah, so maybe the next day one right and the another one we use a shift like that. So that to make sure that there is no uh, error is not shipped uh, in production. <laughs> That's, that's such a great way to learn and it's so rarely done in academia you know it's like mm. if you're if you're really lucky there are other people in your lab that use r and that's not even that common in a lot of places yeah <laughs> yeah and even if there are other people that use r you're just asking them for help occasionally rather than actually saying hey this is my code to do this important thing can you review mm -hmm. it Yeah, that nothing like this exists because I know from my papers, which I published, I wrote the whole code for myself and no one checked <laughs> if the output is correct. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know my first paper has some calculation errors in there. I mean, it's minimal, <laughs> but for yeah. me, I, I figured it out later. Yeah. <laughs> so um, currently, um, we're working on, on one paper and uh, I finished the code and um, my supervisor was like, no, he's not sure. Um, <laughs> he has to review the code. And uh, funny enough, he, he, he doesn't know how to do the Tidyverse ecosystem. And all my code are in Tidyverse. I mean, Tide, and um, he has to write the code from scratch <laughs> um, using base R. And uh, luckily, um, uh, he, while he was writing, he has to spend like three days, like, errors he can't do that he has to call me how do you do this i mean but at the end of the day he managed to do it and uh, we're happy that our uh, result was quite the same and yeah <laughs> so he's quite happy yeah so he said okay that's fine he is now comfortable with the results <laughs> and back to the topic of mariella uh, does actually anyone using the debugger so I I'm not no I don't use it. I have not actually but I I see um Juan is using debugger because he has a good experience I think Juan <laughs> hello yeah you are using debugger right yeah I've been kind of using it uh like I like writing uh functions that I use to do certain stuff and mm -hmm. you know when it doesn't do what I tell it to do like I just kind of mm -hmm. stepping into it you know see where it went wrong but um can't yeah, I I like running things line by line. Yeah, can't I go, just go through the function that I'm expecting, like without the debugger, uh, and see what's I mean? Yeah, Sham, I think I know what you mean. That's like uh, that's like <laughs> my mode of debugging. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in, instead of doing it the right way with the debugger, I end up running the function line by yes. line just with the you know I'll assign the data that it needs in yes. the global environment, and then mm -hmm. yeah, I was noticing that reading this chapter that you know a lot of the when they're discussing a lot of things, they're like, oh, and then you can fall back to print debugging. And I'm like, I kind of go the other way. Right? <laughs> Maybe it's like, a, I need to do that yes. shift to doing it the right way. <laughs> yes, yeah. Like this concept I really enjoy with other programming language where there's more module based. So your functions should be by itself something which you can execute by itself. Like uh, you can run down it, like you said, with the global environment, like I would copy out the function and run it like this. And, and I really miss that in R that you, your functions are not um, a code, but uh, how, that they're somehow contained in something. And I don't want that. I, I, I would like to just run the function code like it would be my main environment. And in an other context, I would like to import it that it's a function. So, yeah. All right. Um, thank Mariela. Um, that's a nice slide. And next week, we are having um, break, right? Um, we are almost done. Um, <laughs> a few meetings, I think we're going to round up. So thank you all guys. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, today the chapter is quite small. Um, yeah, we finish very early. So if we don't have anything to talk, I think we can meet next week. Thanks everyone. Okay. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank Bye. you guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Oh. Bye.